Message is a set of seven strategies that can help you to provide quality care by making the most of communication with people with dementia. Each letter of message stands for a different strategy. As a professional caregiver, you're likely to come into contact with a range of people with different levels of need. The message strategies can be used with people in all stages of dementia. Remember that everybody's situation will be different and you'll need to see which strategies work with different individuals. Let's start with M for maximise attention. Dementia makes it difficult for people to focus their attention. So to give them the best chance of being involved in communication, you need to maximise their attention. You can attract their attention by greeting them by name, moving to their eye level and establishing eye contact. And keep the eye contact going throughout the conversation. It also helps if you can avoid distraction like TV or radio because this makes it difficult for the person to concentrate on anything else. At the end of the day, can I come in? Me yesterday that you could stop it. Good morning, so Stanley. Told, you How are you today? When there is a just another day. Told when oh, it's just another day, hey? Can I turn the radio down yesterday. for a minute? Yeah. I know you can go to, to, to the website. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Stanley, I'd like to introduce you to Katrina. This is her first week working here. People with dementia cope best in conversations with one person at a time because it's hard for them to split their attention in different directions. If you do have a group conversation, remind people to speak one at a time and do what you can to help with maintaining attention. And when you're talking with someone with dementia, try not to hold another conversation at the same time. To maximise attention, you need to attract the person's attention, avoid distraction and speak one at a time. The next strategy is E for expression and body language. Although we don't always realise it, our tone of voice, facial expression and body language can be what communicates the strongest message to a person with dementia, especially as their understanding of actual words declines. This means that it's important to be aware of your non-verbal communication, to have a relaxed and calm manner and show that you're interested this can help reduce the chance of agitation in the person. Are you all right, Stanley? I don't remember. All right. Would you like to sit down for a minute? We can have a talk. You can also make use of simple non-verbals like a smile or a nod or eye contact to keep on communicating in the more severe stages. Watch your expression and body language. Try to keep a relaxed and calm manner and show that you're interested. S stands for simple. Keep it simple. People with dementia have trouble holding things in memory. This makes it difficult to understand long sentences containing several pieces of information. So try to keep your sentences short, simple and familiar. If you need to give several pieces of information, just break them up and let the person respond to each piece separately. Your daughter's coming in this afternoon. Mm. I can give her your broken glasses. Mm. She can get them fixed. Mm. It's also important to keep things simple by choosing familiar words. Be aware of the words you're using and be prepared to reword what you've said. It also helps to use actual names of things instead of pronouns like it and they to help the person follow what you're talking about. Do you have any spare ones? Sorry? Spare specs. Spare glasses? Hmm. I oh, could. I'll have to find your spare glasses for you. You need to ask quite a lot of questions as part of your job, 
some to get specific information, and others to build rapport. When you need specific information, like where the pain is or what the person wants to eat, ask the questions that are easiest to answer. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm having trouble finding out what Stanley would like for lunch. Oh, OK. I find it helps to tell him what the choices are, mm -hmm. rather than just asking him what he'd like for lunch. Oh, OK. So you could ask him, would he like a sandwich or the hot meal? That way he doesn't have to think about the answer on his own. Mm -hmm. Or you could just say, would you like a sandwich? Mm -hmm. And that way he can just answer yes or no. So you might start out by asking them what they want for lunch, but then you might need to narrow that down to the choices. Okay, that makes sense. Good morning, Ivy. Would you like a hot drink? Mm hmm? Would you like coffee or tea? Tea. Tea. Lovely. I can get you a cup of tea. Remember though, you can keep your language simple without talking down to someone. So to keep things simple, use short, simple and familiar sentences and give clear choices when you're asking for specific information. The second S stands for support the conversation. There are a few straightforward supportive techniques that you can use to help people with dementia to keep up with you in conversation. First, they'll need more time to process information. Dementia slows the person's thinking, so by leaving a longer than usual pause, about four to five seconds, you're giving them the time they need to understand what you've said and come up with a response. What are you doing here, Stanley? Taking a photo. Ah, oh, yeah, you're, you're taking a photo. Yeah. As well as giving time, you may need to help the person find the word they're looking for, because people with dementia have increasing difficulty accessing their store of words. So, when you went fishing, did you go out in a boat? No. We, uh, on the shore. Oh, on the shore. Yeah. No. Mm, on the beach? No. No. Right out over, over the um when you go right out on the uh on the uh um, fishing right out on the pier? Yeah. Pier. For each individual you'll need to find a balance between giving enough time to think of the word, but not leaving them struggling. The aim is to do it naturally and conversationally, rather than drawing attention to the problem. You could just say the word, or repeat the sentence with the missing word in it, or suggest an option, as in, do you mean the peer? Another way to support the conversation is by repeating and rephrasing. If the person doesn't seem to understand what you've said, try repeating it. If there's still a problem, try saying it again in a different way. What sort of fish did you catch? Sort of. Hmm. What sort of fish did you catch? What were the types of fish you caught? All types. People with dementia have difficulty remembering, even over a short period of time. So to help them follow the conversation, you may need to slip in frequent reminders of the topic. Introduce every new topic clearly using the main topic word, and then mention the main word again every couple of turns. What were the types of fish you caught? All types. Did you catch any snapper? Snapper? Whiting? Snapper? Mm -hmm. Those types. They're all good. Yeah, snapper are lovely fish. 
Oh good, you found Stanley's photo album. I'll need you to set up the dining room for lunch soon. Okay, no problem. Okay. If the conversation is interrupted, don't expect that the person will be able to just pick up where you left off. You'll need to reintroduce the topic. Where were we? Ah, oh, your fishing days. Hmm. And also, try to make it clear when you're moving on to another topic so that there isn't confusion between the old topic and the new one. To support the conversation, you'll need to give the person time. Try to help them find the word they need. Sometimes repeat or rephrase what you've said and give reminders of the topic. The next strategy is A, assist with visual aids. Visual information can help a person with dementia understand your meaning. You can use gestures and actions to show what's needed when giving the person instructions. You better put your jacket on next. One arm at a time. You can show them the object you're talking about, or at least a picture of it. These sports shoes or the brown shoes? The brown shoes. Okay. You can also use objects or pictures in the immediate environment to stimulate conversation. Looking as good as you did in the Air Force days? Not too bad. And here's one of your wedding day. Hmm. That was just outside the church. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Visual aids can be especially helpful as a person's understanding of spoken words declines and the visual cues they get from familiar situations can help them understand when words fail. You can assist people with dementia using visual aids like gestures, actions, objects and pictures. The G stands for get their message. As dementia progresses, there's often a need for the conversation partner to work out the person's intended message. It's very important to start with the attitude that he or she is trying to express something meaningful. But understand also that you'll probably need to make more effort than usual to listen, watch and work out their meaning. Listen sensitively for verbal hints. The words might not be quite right but the message might be coming through. How did you get to work? Did you drive? Yeah. Yeah? Did you have a car? No. Them. 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 They, they supplied a... Uh... Oh, you had a company car. Yeah. You can encourage the person to give you more information by saying hmm, yeah or okay to prompt them to continue. Or you can reflect back what you think they're saying to give them the chance to confirm it or to add some more information. What did you have for lunch? Had, um, what do you call it, balls? You know, where you lay ladle. Mm, ladle? What do you call it? Ladle the meat. Oh, you had meatballs. Yeah. Also, watch the person's behaviour for non-verbal clues to their meaning, like where they're looking or their facial expression. Birthday. Four. Four. Mm. Yes, 75th birthday. 
Behaviour can be an important form of communication. For instance, if a person is walking around in the dining room, they're possibly hungry. Knowing the person will help you pick up on all of these clues more easily. As a professional carer, you'll need to familiarise yourself as much as possible with the person's likes and dislikes and their interests and routines. Then you'll be able to use this to work out what they're trying to say. So to get the person's message, listen, watch and try to work out the meaning and pay attention to their behaviour and non-verbal messages. The final strategy is E for encourage and engage in communication. The basic human need for interaction with others is still there through all stages of dementia. Some people, especially in aged care, may have limited opportunities for social engagement, so may rely on staff for this. This means that encouraging communication is an important part of providing quality care. You can engage in conversation during your normal care routines by commenting on topics that are interesting and familiar to the person, as well as any necessary care-related talk. Photos, objects or memorabilia in their room will give you something to talk about. You're all done, Ivy. All done with brushing your hair. Look at all your photos of your birthday party. All your grandchildren and children were there. <laughs> That's a very pretty card. Look at all the flowers on it. Yeah. People may like to talk about the old days. Memories from long ago, like childhood or early adulthood, are often easier to remember than more recent years or what happened earlier that day. And you may find that you hear the same story a few times over, but that doesn't matter. The important thing is to provide opportunities to talk. Was that when you first came to Australia? Oh. Uh, I... Were you just a young lad? Yeah. And you moved to Melbourne? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moved to Sydney. Oh, you moved to Sydney first. Um, that was when the... the, the cruiser... Mm -hmm brought me to Sydney. Ah, oh, so you came on a ship? Yeah. One thing to remember is that it's best not to ask test questions like, what's my name or what day is it today? Asking these types of things doesn't help the person remember and can just frustrate them. What did you have for breakfast? Do you recall? I, I don't know. Do you remember? Hmm. That's no good. Do you remember my name? It's also better to avoid saying, do you remember or do you know at the end of a question, as in, and did you have any dogs on the farm? Do you remember? because that extra question sometimes seems to interfere with the person's memory for the main question. A common issue in the dementia unit that you may not experience elsewhere is that residents sometimes become confused about reality. Ivy is a good example. She often asks to go home to see her mother. Now your first instinct might be to reason with her that her mother's passed away so she can't see her. So don't argue with what she's saying, but just acknowledge her feelings and reassure her. Sometimes you can get her onto a safer aspect of the same topic, like how she enjoyed her mum's cooking. Then she stops fretting so much about going home to see her. So encourage communication by engaging with people on interesting and familiar topics and providing opportunities to talk. The important things to remember from the message strategies are 
Maximize attention by focusing the person's attention, avoiding distraction, and speaking one at a time. Watch your expression and body language and your tone of voice so that you appear relaxed and interested. Keep it simple by using short, simple sentences with familiar words and by giving clear choices when you need specific information. Support the conversation by giving the person extra time, helping them to find the words, repeating the sentences when they don't understand and reminding them of the topic of conversation. Assist with visual aids, including gestures, actions, objects and pictures. Try to get their message by listening, watching and working out the meaning. Also use the person's behaviour and non-verbal messages to help you understand. Finally, encourage communication and engage with people with dementia by finding opportunities to chat about topics that are interesting and familiar to them.